Acura is precision crafted performance. We are the performance division of Honda and we've been on a resurgence to rebuild the brand. And we started with the NSX and we got heavily into the motorsport business. The next step is to bring back some of the performance variants that we've had in the lineup, which is the Type S. The TLX, the new MDX, they'll both come with a Type S variant. So the question is, what is the Type S? From an R&D perspective, it is obviously a sports variant. When you create a Type S, first thing you have to do is you have to put it through a filter of stop, go, and turn. Everything has to be better in all three of those. And you up the game. Does it get more horsepower? Does it get stiffer suspension? All of those things get put into play to make the car more sporty. Originally, we said it had to be a minimum of 30 horsepower. Then we realized 30 horsepower more for, a, for an RSX is not the same as 30 horsepower more for a CL. So we came up with a ratio and number to help us figure out what does it need to be in terms of measurable go stop turn performance. What's the number of horsepower? What's the difference in pounds per foot of torque? What's the difference in braking distance? and that dictates the hardware. But then there's also this emotional connection where it has to be things that people can really buy into. Type S. It has its history back in Japan on the first Type S NSX back in 97. Unfortunately, that car never made it to the States. It stayed in Japan but that's where the Type S logo and brand variant starts to come into play. Yeah, of course, we were completely aware of the, the Type S NSX. We knew what it was, we knew what the formula was for that, and we talked to the R&D team about that. We used it as a reference point because we wanted to understand how do the engineers at Honda Motor recognize the difference between Type R and Type S. Type S was never meant to be the same as Type R. It was meant to balance ride comfort with that handling. So you still had all the creature comforts, you could still have leather, you could still have all of the things that you loved about your Acura, but with more performance, more acceleration, more braking, better handling. So still maintaining go stop turn performance at a better level than, than the standard cars, but without the compromises you have to make to get that Type R peak performance. In the end, we made our own decisions about what Type S would be for North America, which was the heart of the market. So the Type S is a sports variant that brings in the best of both worlds. The sporty aspects, as well as not losing the civility of driving a vehicle every day. So we decided to bring the Type S into the North American market. Did we go and just copy what the NSX Type S was about? To tell you the truth, no. We started with a program and a secret car called the ACR. As the 98 Accord Coupe was coming to the launch phase, there were a number of us who were thinking, you know, we wanted to do more. So we proposed, well, let's make a one-off. You know, let's make a mule, let's make a prototype, or let's make a show car. And uh, so we decided to uh, do that and got permission and get a little bit of budget and went way over budget in the end. But uh, we, we made a car that uh, looked even more aggressive and more sporty and uh, had the performance to match. It became a, a tool for us to then consider what would we do with the next generation Acura CL. The ACR that uh, Eric had overseen the build of in Ohio, the first time Eric put me behind the wheel of it, I didn't understand how he was setting me up. It took a little bit of time before I, before I really understood that that was his vision for what would become Type S. It helped us all shape our perception of the kind of performance cars we wanted to build with Type S. Everything about it just helped us all crystallize our thoughts on how the car should feel. Not the, not the measurements, not the quantifiables, but just the feel and the, and the reaction and how you interact with it. But I was also now getting farther down the, the planning pipeline for the 01 Acura CL. Because we had showed 
the uh, ACR and gotten so many people kind of jazzed about, wow, that's really awesome. It really goes 166 miles an hour. We'll take some of that goodness and we'll, we'll bake it into the seal. Well, at the time of the start of development for the Acura CL, second generation CL, we thought we only need a V6. So let's propose a V6 only lineup, an exclusive uh, new development powertrain, new uh, engine, higher output, and some other uh, changes to define uh, fundamentally for the first time the Type S. Very different than the uh, NSX Type S that had uh, debuted back in 97, which was basically taking things out to reduce weight. This time we were going to add more power and torque and tighten up the suspension and steering and so on to make it feel sportier. The, the sedan and the coupe in base trim were different in their own rights in terms of their dynamic tuning. But, you know, if you stand back far enough, you can say, ah, you know, they were appealing to the masses. Softer than what some of us want. So when we found that we had been successful with introducing the Type S CL with a much firmer, direct kind of dynamic response, and we found that there are customers that appeal to that, we theorized that the sedan could benefit from that too. There's more sedan customers than there are coupe customers. And the sedan customers were also saying, give me a little more sport. R&D in North America and the R&D in Japan, of course, were linked. Any goodness that we see coming from them or and vice versa, you're free to take it. And whether that's the actual hardware or just the idea. So the RSX team, I think, saw the success of Type S and said, we've got to capitalize on that too. And then working with the product planning folks in North America in both R&D and in sales, put together a set of specs that, uh, you know, I'll say hit the nail on the head. That was the fun one. This is for the kids in all of us. Now, the people who actually bought it really proved us right because there were some buyers that skewed a little bit older, but a lot of them still have them today. They bought that car to hang on to because it's just for fun. RSX was definitely the wild child of the three. The 07 TL Type S. We started with a non-Type S, you know, a mono-grade, one engine, the carryover Type S engine at 260 horsepower, which was great. We had been able to make some improvements from the CL Type S to the 04 TL base. But uh, we really wanted to do another Type S, so we had this 3.5 liter version of the engine with more torque and horsepower. The torque's the real problem when it comes to like torque steer. It was still front wheel drive at this point, and we were quite challenged. We applied everything that we had done through research phases and our know-how was poured into that car to make it a good car. We did the best we could and we pushed it up to 286 horsepower. And I think since then, time has marched on and we see that, you know, we can go even farther and we have. So Type S, where is it today? Obviously, we've built our heritage over the years. And today's Type S, like in this TLX, has gone through the same filter as the previous generation of stop, go, turn. It completes itself as a best of both worlds in terms of performance and amenities, but best of worlds based on today's world. The old saying of opportunity is where experience and good fortune meet. It's a little bit of that story. When we looked at the launch cadence, when we looked at the models that we could build Type S's from, we had to start with TLX. It, the, the, having a performance sedan, which is where Acura came from, had to be the first shot out of the gate. So what's next for Type S? It's in our cars. Obviously, the next step is to bring them into our SUV. Which SUV? The best-selling three-row premium SUV of all time, 
the MDX. Could we build an SUV with three roads that would live up to the Type S promise? And once we realized that we could, there was no other way to go. It was the right thing to do. Being able to add a Type S to that just adds a whole new dimension to it. We couldn't do that until now because we didn't necessarily have the hardware. Now we've got the engine for it. Now we've got the suspension for it. We've got the chassis that will live up to that. Now that we can do all those things, we're doing it right. And that's what's exciting about the MDX Type S. When we talked about Type S from its origins, we wanted it to be a little bit more real. Not just performance for those that, that could afford something astronomic. And we also wanted it to be homegrown. Type S from its origins was supposed to be more fun, but this generation of Type S models is specifically targeting the best performance on a track for that competitive set of vehicles, which means you can take it to a track and the brakes will hold up and the engine will deliver. The other part of it is we make it for ourselves. We didn't go buy some performance tuner and try to mold them to our way of thinking. It was always our own original concept of what can we do to make this the most of that car that we can make. Those are the things that I think make Type S special. So we talked quite a bit about Type S, where it comes from, the heritage, the DNA in the past and how it represents itself in the new products like the TLX and the upcoming MDX. Type S is all about performance and it is a big part of the precision crafted performance narrative at Acura. And I can guarantee you, like in the past and now, it's gonna be a big part of our future.